Say what you will about 21st Century Green Day, but I, personally, am of the belief that they have yet to release a truly horrible album. Back in the 90s, Green Day did not miss. Their debut album, 39 Smooth, is nothing to scream about, but for some kids who were still very young at the time, it's a promising start. The next year follow-up, Kerplunk, is an amazing and underrated glimpse of the now core trio developing their sound. The breakthrough global smash, Dookie, is them mastering that sound, alongside production from Rob Cavallo. Insomniac is Green Day taking that sound into the pits of darkness, while still not losing their melodic sensibilities. And then we have 1997's Nimrod, which is the band eclecticifying their sound, if that's even a word. When people ask me what my favorite Green Day album is, I, 9 times out of 10, say Nimrod. No song is bad, and it has 18 songs, so that's saying something. Not only that, but I'd say that 5 of the tracks are serious contenders for my top 20 songs by Green Day ever. With that introduction out of the way, let's delve deeper into Nimrod. Green Day were in a very tough spot when it was time to record the follow-up to Insomniac. For one, while still a massive commercial success, Insomniac did not sell in the same ballpark as Dookie. To paint a clearer picture, as of 2023, Dookie is 10 times platinum, whereas Insomniac is 2 times platinum. Two, some critics at the time thought that Insomniac was a similar, but weaker, version of the previous record. Now that's just simply not true. Insomniac is a much darker and more abrasive album. But all in all, I will concede that there are some obvious similarities. As a result, the trio felt the need to change things up, not only to avoid boring the general public, but worse, themselves. Nimrod, which came out two years later, still had a solid number of tracks that were in the same realm of classic sounding Green Day. However, the instrumental and surf rock inspired Last Ride In, the horn heavy and ska influenced King For A Day, and the worldwide smash hit Good Riddance, Time Of Your Life, were definite signs that the band were making conscious efforts to expand their sound. Nimrod is not only my favorite Green Day album, but one of my favorite albums of all time. It showcases the incredible songwriting talent of Billy Joe Armstrong, alongside great performances from Mike and Trey. I won't do a song-by-song -song breakdown, as that is a very tedious thing to do, but besides the obvious favorites, there are also many underrated gems to be admired. The melodically divine Worry Rock, the metal attack of Take Back, and the fantastic one-two punch of Jinx into Hashinka, just to name a few. Nimrod, I think, does the perfect job of staying true to their pop-punk ethos while still expanding their sound without ever coming across as cheesy. Sadly, as the 2000s progressed, that GD cheesiness would slowly but surely creep more and more into their sound. So even though I see the appeal and genuinely enjoy 21st Century Breakdown, The Trilogy, and Revolution Radio, I acknowledge that many lyrics and melodic motifs from those albums are a bit gimmicky. I can't think of a better introduction to the punk genre than Nimrod. Its variety and quality make it the perfect front door to this kind of music. I know that's not what the punk heads want to hear, but it's what they need to hear. Please smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment on what album, band, or song you'd like to see me explore in the future. CD Player out.